Today is September the 27th. Today, we'll study the end of Saul's life as we read 1 Samuel 27 to 31. Reading through the Bible in a year, please read Samuel, 1 Samuel 27 to the very end of that book. Now, in this passage, we see a, a, a fairly complicated uh, relationship develop between David and a particular Philistine king. And we already know about the complication of David and Saul. In chapter 27, David actually goes to Philistia. He joins one of the city kings, the kings of a city-state, Achish. Uh, Achish is the king of Gath. And David goes to Achish, convinces him that he now hates Saul, hates Israel. He's ready to fight against Saul. Achish accepts what he has said, and he gives him the city of Ziklag, in 27.6, David goes and he stays in Ziklag. He's there for a year and four months. And uh, during that time, David would go over the line as if he were attacking Israel. But he'd come back over and attack a city of Philistia. Uh, raid it, uh, drive everybody out. Then he would... Uh, come back to Ziklag and tell King Achish, look at all the booty we've got from Israel. <laughs> um, in chapter 28, Saul, recognizing that things are not going well for him, consults a medium. She uh, brings up the spirit of Samuel. When Samuel gets there, or we're not sure, it says that she saw a spirit that looked like Samuel. It might not have been Samuel. At any rate, uh, the Spirit speaks to Saul. It says, what are you doing? Uh, you, you need to leave the dead alone. You have prophets that you can go to. Saul says, I'm in deep trouble. Samuel says, you sure are. Uh, God is taking the kingdom from you. Don't you remember what I told you? And uh, we end chapter 28. Saul is in deep depression now. In chapter 29, Philistia goes to fight against Saul. David goes with them. But the other Philistine generals, the other kings, have not been duped by David. And uh, they refuse to let him go to, go to the war with him. So David returns to his city of Ziklag. In chapter 30, when he gets to Ziklag, he finds that Ziklag has been attacked by another enemy, the Ammonites. David uh, consults the Lord and then goes against the Ammonites, totally defeats them, uh, brings back... Uh, all that they had taken from Ziklag. And uh, he's uh, uh, again in the city of Ziklag. In chapter 30, while David is away fighting the Ammonites, Philistia conquers Israel. They find Saul. They attack the army. They kill Saul's three sons. The archers have now uh, uh, mortally wounded Saul. He realizes it. He says to his armor bearer, I don't want to be killed by Philistine arrows. You kill me. The armor bearer refuses. So Saul props his sword up, falls on his sword. The armor bearer does the same. And at the end, when Philistia arrives, they take the body of Saul and his three sons and they nail them to the wall of the nearest city. 
in verse 11 of chapter 31, when the people of Jabesh Gilead heard what the Philistines had done to to Saul, all their mighty warriors traveled through the night to Bethshan, that city. They took the body of Saul and his sons down from the wall. They brought them to Jabesh, where they burned the bodies. They took their bones and they buried them beneath the tamarisk tree at Jabesh. And then they fasted for seven days. This was Saul's end. David didn't kill him. Uh, The Philistines did. David, all his life, sought to protect Saul, even when David could have taken his life. He chose not to because Saul was the anointed of the Lord. Next week, we'll take a look at 2 Samuel and see what happens. See how David's devotion to Saul and his family actually won over Saul's army. Like, follow, and subscribe to this devotional on whatever platform you use to listen to it. Email your questions to us at questions at becomehope.com. Tomorrow, we'll answer the question, did God break his covenant with Israel? 